So I've been making some DIY pedals and sometimes they just look a little bit wonky. So I've decided to come up with some kind of template to make a design repeatable and make it look a lot neater. So I've opened up FreeCAD. This is a FreeCAD package where it's open source and I've created an outline of a pedal. From this, I'm gonna extrude a flat surface and then into that surface, we're just gonna add a few features to kind of smooth it off. So we've added some rounds and rads to make it much neater. And now a small little chamfer on the inside so it'll slip onto a standard Hammond side case that's used so often for DIY electronic projects. And then in this top surface, we're gonna put some holes and this allows us to use a hammer to do a little indent of where we need to drill the holes. It's not gonna give us a size of holes. We've got to determine that later, but this means we can slot this onto the top of a pedal, mark where the holes need to be, and it makes it so much more repeatable. A couple of chamfers on the top so that the case, this template's not gonna get in the way. But one thing we've got is this is quite a lot of plastic and we don't wanna waste plastic. We don't wanna make something more complicated than what we need to. So I'm just gonna cut away anything that I think I can while keep, still keeping a bit of strength to it so that, you know, I can throw this around the workshop and it's not gonna break. So I think that looks great. I think that's gonna do the job really well. So next we need to print this. So we're gonna use a program called Cura and this is once more free bit of software that allows us to slice up the model so we can 3D print this. This takes about two hours to print and uses, what's it, 10 grams of material. So a standard kilogram is about 20 pounds, somewhere around there. So this is gonna cost about 20 pence to make. So not much at all. And these can be designed for any pedal layout you want. So if you've got a pedal layout in mind, drop us a message, I might be able to update this for you, but I'm gonna give away the STL file. So if you want, you can create this yourself. So now we've created the file, we just need to put it into the 3D printer. My bed's covered in glue. That's just the way I like to print. It tends to be really consistent when I do this, though a little bit messy. If you've not seen a 3D printer before, this just extrudes hot plastic as an extruder moves across a bed. And as the plastic sets, it builds up a shape. And as it does it layer by layer, it creates the 3D part that we want. One thing's really cool is you can design something, print it out, and then a couple of hours later in this case, you have the part. It's so much faster than the postman. I could watch this for hours, seeing how the machine actually builds up layer by layer to create the shape we've designed. but. We don't have time for that. Let's skip forward and see the final thing. So two hours later, it's now dark, but here it is. It looks beautiful in this purple. So let's pull it off the bed and get it onto a Hammond case. So this is the case I'm gonna use. It's a standard size and I wanna put two holes in for two different potentiometers. And then I'm gonna have a switch at the bottom and an LED light. The template seems to fit really well that I can actually pick up the case. I'm just gonna put the center punch on in each, each of these holes and then give it a little tap. So hopefully that's left a few little indented marks where we can line up the drill. Now we do still have to be accurate with the drill and it is quite difficult with this material to see the impact marks sometimes. So it may be easier start with a smaller drill bit and working your way up. And so we just drill each of these indents that we've done. <laughs> so I've, I've drilled all the holes, I've made them the correct size, and it looks really consistent. It's done the job well. So I'm gonna give away the file to create this on Fingerverse. There's a link in the description. If you use it, drop us a comment, let us know if it works for you. If you've got any improvements you wanna make to it, just let me know and I'll try and incorporate them. There may be better ways to do this. If you've got a better idea, do share it in the comments. Other people will benefit from this. But for me, this was a really cheap, simple way to create guitar pedals repeatedly. This is what I was creating, and now I've created these two. This is going to be an A and B comparison between a germanium and a silicon fuzz face. So stick around if you want to see what those sound like. But yeah, till next time, that's it.